Hello everybody. In this video, we'll cover the option of displaying results along a line for shell elements. In the example on the screen, we can see a slab on the x1, x2 plane. The load in this example is perpendicular to the slab with a value of 20 kN per square meters in the minus x3 direction. Let's move on to the results module. Go to General Results and Draw Results. Under the Display Type drop-down menu, we can find the option Element Results along a line. Under the Result Type drop-down menu, we can see the results that are available. We'll select Moments in the Section Direction. Now, the user must define a section line. Select the option Define a Section Line and the plane of the section line. We'll select Parallel to X1, X3. At the top right corner of the screen, we can see the line definition options by nodes, by coordinates, or to define a strip by selecting two nodes. We'll define the line by a node. By selecting a node, we can see that we defined a line. We'll create a few more lines. And now, we'll display the result moment in the section direction. We can see the moment diagram along the defined lines. At the graphic display window, there is an option to some results over a strip. By checking the box and inserting a strip width, Strap will create a strip along the defined lines and sum all the results along the strip width. In this example, we'll set the strip width to 1 meter. We can see a hatched area that represents the strip and the summed results. Additionally, at the graphic display window, there's an option to set different strip width for different lines. Select the option Multiple Widths. We can see the line number, its direction, its coordinates, and its strip width. Let's change the strip width of lines 2 and 4 to 2 meters. We can see a wider strip width for lines 2 and 4. The user can select Result Type from the Result Type drop-down menu. Now we'll display moments that are perpendicular to the section line. This moment's direction is the global X2 direction. Also available are forces, stresses, wooden armor moments, and reinforcement. Let's see the results for reinforcement in the section line direction at plus x3 face, the top face of the slab. We can see the reinforcement results at the negative moment area around the supports, and no top reinforcement needed in the middle of the spans. Now we'll display the bottom reinforcement. And we can see the bottom reinforcement at the spans. We can also see bottom reinforcement in the support area. This is due to the incapability of the concrete to take the compression stress and compressed reinforcement is needed. The last result type we'll display in this example is the deflection of a slab. In the next example, we modeled a simply supported beam from shell elements. The span of the beam is 8 meters and the height of the section is 1 meter. 
the beam element at the top of the beam is a dummy beam, just for loading purposes. Pay attention that the shell elements are parallel to the X1, X3 plane. We defined one load case with 20 kN per meter. Now let's go to the result module. For this beam, we would like to display the result at the shell elements plane, X1, X3. Go to Graphic Display and Draw Results. Select Element Results along a line. Now we'll define a line parallel to X1, X2 plane and define a strip by selecting two nodes. A node at the bottom of the beam and a node at the top of the beam. When strip is defined, two more result types are added, strip in plane moment and strip in plane shear. Both of these results are for moment and shear forces in the shell elements plane. Let's display in plane moments. We can see at the middle of the span 160 kilonewton meter, which is the result we expect. Now we'll display the in-plane shear. We can see the shear diagram. We would expect that the value at the end of the diagram will be 80 tons, but the program displays 77.5 tons. This is the result of finite element calculation, where the shear value is constant to each element. At any line of contact between elements, the program will calculate an average between two touching elements. The values 70 and 75 are correct, and they are an average of the shear force in element to the right, and the shear force from the element to the left. Since the last column of elements is at the edge of the beam, there are no elements to continue the average calculation. The program displays 77.5 tons, which is the value at the center of the last row of elements. The user may delete the defined lines by selecting Delete a section line at the graphic display window. Now, let's define a vertical line parallel to X2, X3 plane at the center of the beam. and ask to display result type for stresses at plus Z perpendicular to a section. We can see the compression and tension stresses along the beam section and the value of 3.2 matches the expected value. We'll move on to the next example. In this model, we defined a reinforced concrete wall with many openings. The wall supports four levels of frame structure. Three load cases were defined. The first load case includes the wall's self-weight and vertical loads from the supported structure. The second load case includes a vertical load only on one of the beams. The third load case includes three horizontal joint loads at different levels. We'll move on to the results module. Now we'll focus on the results of our wall. In order to design the wall, we'll need to know the internal moments, axial and shear forces in the wall due to external forces. We'll start with the axial force. We will display the axial force along a line and sum the results over strips.
we can see that after we defined two strips with different widths, next to the button multiple widths, we see the number 2 to let us know that two strips with different widths were defined. Selecting multiple widths will display the two strips that were defined. Now we will display the forces in the section direction, which will give us the axial forces at the defined strips for the first load case. Displaying the result type strip in plane moment will display the moments for bending at the wall's plane. Strip in plane shear will display the shear forces at the wall's plane. Some codes allow to divide the wall to strips and to design the wall according to the compression or tension forces at each strip. Let's define the design strips. Select define a section line. Make sure select location select a strip is active and define the strips by selecting two nodes. For this example, the strip width is equal to the width of the mesh elements, but the user may define different strip widths for design according to the code. Now, we'll ask to display the forces in the section direction, and we can see the actual forces for each strip. The minus sign represents compression, so for this load case all of the design strips are compressed. Now we'll display the same result type but for the third load case which includes horizontal loads at the direction of plus x1 global axis. We can see that some of the strips are tensioned, positive sign, and some of the strip are compressed, negative sign. We can also ask to display the reinforcement for each strip. We'll select the result type reinforcement in the line direction at plus x3 face, which means the reinforcement at the face of the plus x3 direction of the element's local axis. We can see the required AS in square centimeters. We can see that for the compressed strips, no reinforcement needed. It is important to understand that this AS is only for one face of the wall. If we select to display reinforcement in the line direction at minus x3, we get the same results because the bending is at the wall's plane not perpendicular to it. So, for the first strip, from the left, we must provide 10.3 centimeters at each face of the wall, and a total of 20.6 square centimeters. Now, we'll focus on the coupling beam of the wall. We'll define a strip along the beam and ask to display strip in plane moments for the first load case, which includes all vertical loads. We can see the moment diagram of the beam. The right side of the beam is a cantilever, and we can see the negative moment in the cantilever support area. 
for the middle span, we can see positive moment on the left side and negative moment at the right side. Not quite what we expected. We would expect to get negative moments at both ends of the beam. An explanation for this situation can be found by displaying the displacements of the entire structure. We can see that the entire structure is tilting to the right, and that's the reason for the unexpected moment diagram. We would have gotten the expected moment diagram if the wall was braced at the direction of x1 or that the vertical loads will be applied only on the beam. We'll display the moment diagram for the second load case, which includes only vertical loads applied on the beam. Now we can see the expected moment diagram. As demonstrated in this video, the option to display results along a line for shell elements can assist the user in the process of analyzing the results, although the user must have the capability of understanding the structure behavior in order to validate the analysis results. This is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.